ProEcuador implementa una metodología de trabajo llamada Ruta ProEcuador para el Exportador, para apoyar e incentivar el trabajo de todos los potenciales exportadores y de esta manera internacionalizar sus productos. Si posees un producto o un servicio y quieres saber si es apto para exportar, necesitarás iniciar en la etapa de orientación y asesoría donde aprenderás cómo se desarrollan los procesos de exportación y conocerás las restricciones en los mercados internacionales. También tendrás acceso a talleres introductorios al comercio exterior, guías informativas, boletines de mercado y mucha información que te ayudará en el proceso para ser un exportador. En la siguiente fase de la ruta tendrás acceso a talleres introductorios al comercio exterior, guías informativas, boletines de mercado y mucha información que te ayudará en el proceso para ser un exportador. ¿Quieres conocer cómo obtener tu certificado de asistencia a nuestras capacitaciones? Fácil, sigue estos cuatro pasos. Primero, ingresa al siguiente enlace. Segundo, busca el mes en que participaste. Tercero, da clic en el nombre de la capacitación. Cuarto, busca tu nombre y listo. Ya puedes descargar tu certificado. Recuerda que para obtenerlo debes cumplir con un 75% mínimo de asistencia. Queremos que tus productos lleguen lejos. No esperes más y continúa capacitándote con el Viceministerio de Promoción de Exportaciones e Inversiones Pro Ecuador. Muy buen día con todos los asistentes, Ministerio de Producción, Comercio de Industria y Pesca, dejar ese poco participar de la capacitación virtual Madera de Teca en India, cadena de valor y tendencias en la demanda. Este evento es coordinado y organizado a través de la dirección de volumen de servicios de exportador y la oficina comercial de Ecuador en Mumbai. En el evento intervendrá Rasha Sector, secretario de la Operación of All India Timer Merchants, So Millers Allied Industries. El objetivo del evento es que los participantes podrán conocer sobre la cadena de valor y tendencias en la demanda de la madera de teca en India. Y está dirigido a potenciales exportadores y exportadores de madera de teca interesados en conocer acerca del mercado indio. Es importante recordar que podrán realizar sus preguntas a través del chat a medida que avance el evento. En 15 minutos antes que finalice el webinar, serán respuestas de inquietudes más relevantes. De parte del Ministerio, que son de eventos son éxitos y de su total, de su total agrado. Doy paso a Cristina Chiribor, quien dará inicio al evento. Muchas gracias, Alessandro. Muy buenos días con todos. Eh, agradecemos su interés en conocer acerca del mercado de la India. Eh, bueno, eh, como breve introducción, la teca es el principal producto no petrolero ecuatoriano de exportación a la India, aproximadamente 95% de la teca que produce Ecuador se exporta a este país. Y bueno, en este webinar vamos a tratar temas relevantes relacionados con la cadena de valor de la teca, perspectivas de la demanda, aspectos fitosanitarios, situación logística, entre otros. El expositor de este webinar es del señor Raja Sekar, él es secretario de la Federación Nacional de Industria de la Madera, Aserraderos e Industrias Aliadas. Es también secretario de la Asociación de Importadores de Chennai y también es miembro del directorio de la Asociación de Fabricantes y Comercializadores de Muebles. Entonces, vamos a empezar el webinar. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Rajar, for, for taking the time to, to share with with us, your experience, your, your knowledge on the tech industry, and over to you. Thank you so much, Krishna Madam, thank you so much. Uh, you know, Diaz, all the members, all the traders, exporters, plantation owners of all the Ecuador tea growing people. Uh, maybe, can I speak in English? Uh, so somebody is going to yes. translate or? No, 
No, uh, no, uh, Mr. Reza, you can go ahead in, in English. There okay. won't be interpretation. Don't, don't worry. Yeah. Thank you very much, Christina, for giving me this opportunity for speaking on value chain and demand prospects of peak wood in India for the Equator exporters. Thanks for the opportunity. I will try to analyze some uh, starting from the species, HN code, duty structure, problems being faced because of MBR, uh, freight problems, challenges, what are the quality aspects, all these points one by one, I'll be uh, slowly telling whatever I know. Maybe any people have any doubts, can ask in the last question and answer session in the last 10 to 15 minutes. So, see, mainly this, whatever teak is being imported from Ecuador in a big volume, the species is Tectano grandis, popularly known as teak wood. And the logs that are being imported into India are teak round logs, teak rough, uh, rough square logs, and sawn timber. And the HS code for the customs for import of these in India is mentioned on the screen. Maybe I'll be sharing the presentation so that that can be forwarded to all the exporters or plantation owners or traders for them to understand the HS code, duty structure and all. So the slide which is on the screen mentions about the HS code in the customs in India for the round locks, rough squares and sawn timber. So next we go to the duty structure. So the basic customs duty for the round logs is 5% and which is a rough square, which has a small bark on four sides is called as rough square. For them also the duty structure is 5% and for the sawn timber, the duty structure is 10%. So uh, once you do a value addition, the duty for a finished product like sawn timber goes up from 5.5% to 11%. So this is the customs duty structure for Ecuador teak, round logs, rough squares, and sawn timber. Right now, we are experiencing a lot of problem on MBR treatment, which is not available in Ecuador. So right now, for the round logs, the treatment required to import in India is methyl bromide chemical. And even for the rough squares, we require methyl bromide treatment. And where there is no bark, it can be done with methyl bromide treatment or clean dry or heat treatment. For sawn timber, it can be with MBR, clean dry or heat treatment. These are the fumigation treatments which are allowed in India. We'll come to the fumigation problem what we are facing at the moment in the next slide after a few slides. Right now, Ecuador is using aluminum phosphate or phosphine gases for the round locks, where MBR is a very harsh chemical, which is affecting the ozone layer. And in India, without methyl bromide, round locks cannot be imported. But for a few years, the government is permitting these round locks without methyl bromide from Ecuador, Colombia, Cameroon, Suriname, there are few countries where there is no methyl bromide. So these type of teak which comes from these countries, we pay four times penalty for not having a methyl bromide treatment in the origin countries. So we pay up 20 to $30 per CBM for the teak wood which is not treated with MBR in India. So we all trying our best in India as importers and also your Ecuador Trade Commission, your embassy, all are trying very hard to get some relaxation, to waive these four times penalty, and also to permit without methyl bromide. So this is something where this is the burning topic. Our permission to import teak logs into India with, without methyl bromide has expired on 31st of October, 2021. So it's almost, one month, there is no permission to export logs from non-MBR countries. So I request all the exporters and traders to be very cautious, to know the 
uh, maybe your trade commission or Giola and uh, Mrs. Uh, Christina will be updating when this permission will be granted. We are expecting from the government a good news very soon, but definitely we also should think about the worst can also happen. So please be very careful, very cautious to do the process, to load the containers to the exporters in India, because from 1st of November, there is no permission to export the logs from countries where MBR is not available. But we are waiting for a good news. So we will be updating any news from the Indian government regarding relaxation very soon. Next, I'll be telling about the specifications of TCUD, what is required in major portion in Indian, in India. So coming to round logs, the length of the logs are 2.3 meters to 5.8 meters long are very well accepted in the South Indian market. But if you come to North India like Mundra, Mumbai, the length of the logs people prefer 2.3 to 2.5 and 5.8. And we speak about something about sawn timber. Coming to sawn timber, the sizes required in the Indian markets are four inches by three inches, five, by, five inches by three inches, five inches by four inches. These are the major requirements of sawn timber. In the picture, you can see the sawn timber bundles, which is gaining popularity because most of the exporters want to do value addition. By doing this, maybe I should not say this as an Indian, but for the exporters in other countries, if you convert the logs by installing machinery, you can get employment in your country. You can get value addition because you get higher prices for the material. So you do finished product. So maybe in case the MBR problem is not solved, maybe I request the exporters to think about doing value addition, converting the round logs into sawn timber instead of rough squares so that it can be done with clean dry or heat treatment. So these are the required specifications uh, in India for teak wood of Ecuador. Maybe coming about the quality. When we speak about export of teak, the pricing differs from $200 to $700 per cubic meter in India. It is all de depends upon the quality. The dark color grains on the teak wood is the most beautiful aspect of teak wood or teak logs. With my experience of 25 to 30 years, I can see the grain pattern of Ecuador teak is the best, which has lines like a zebra or a tiger lines, which get a good price but there are inferior quality teaks also which doesn't have lines or grains if the density of the wood is good you get a better price if the white, white sap is more you get a less price if the plantation is the age of the plantation is big you get a better price if there are bends you get a less price if there are pinholes you get a less price if the cutting is not proper on four sides and you have more bark then the price will be less if the bark is very thick you get, get a less price. So I request the exporters to ensure that the cutting is good, no bends, no pinholes, no much white sap, and ensure that the density of the wood is good and the grain pattern is good. And maybe for the people who want to do plantations new, maybe buying better saplings with better seed will give you a better returns after seven to eight years when you start the thinning process. So this is about the quality factor. Then Coming to freight, right now we have a problem of non-availability of containers all over the world. We are experiencing 200 to 300% hike in the freight rates and containers are not available, even though the exporters are ready to export because of scarcity of containers. We are not getting slots on the vessels. So one of the suggestion I want to give the exporters is, don't be panicky. The rates are going to stabilize but these rates are going to be there for next six months to one year. We are creating an artificial demand. Maybe exporter not getting a container, he's calling Musk, he's calling one line, he's calling uh, each and every line and making inquiries. So the shipping lines are thinking there is a huge demand being generated and they are increasing the freight rates day by day. So maybe if we keep calm and don't flow too many of inquiries, they, we can see that the freight rates may stabilize in the near future. 
So freight is a very important factor. Even though the material is available, we are not getting the containers. So freight is playing a very big major part in Ecuador and India trade in the last three months. So there is a jump. You can see this slide, which shows the freight rates have jumped by 200 to 300% in the last three months. This is one of the newspaper cutting, which I'll be sharing. So the freight rates have gone up very, very high, like from $600 per container, they have gone up to $3,000 per container. So now I'll come to our today's topic about value chain of timber. So Christina, uh, Mr. Christina, I think everything is clear. My voice is clear or shall I go slow or this is okay? This is okay, uh, Mr. Raja, we can hear you properly. Yeah, thank you very much. So we are coming to the main topic, what I was asked to speak. I spoke something about the basics of tea, freight, quality and all. Now maybe I'll throw some light on value chain of timber in India. So maybe the tea, once it is planted in Ecuador, the plantations, once they grow, it is processed into rough squares in Ecuador. Then the traders are exporting, exporters are doing sometimes directly to India and some exporters are doing through Dubai, Singapore, through some other traders because of the banking system is not that developed or maybe the awareness of the exporter to importer not happening or Indians not interested to directly invest. So, so many Dubai, Singapore, Hong Kong, these type of countries have invested their money in the plantations and exporting their products via Singapore and Dubai countries. Maybe exporters also can think about uh, directly doing by uh, increasing the rapport with the importers and understanding more and more. From Singapore and Dubai traders, the material is coming to Indian importers. So the Indian importers, once they import into India, this is being handled by so many people. Like, it will be either sometimes a sawmiller, sometimes it can be a trader. Once this material comes to a sawmiller, it is cut into sizes which are required mainly for door frames and window frames. Majorly, maybe 70% of the wood, what is imported from Ecuador is used for doors, windows, door frames and window frames. And it is also used in flooring, wooden flooring, furniture industry, even uh, sculptures are done and in temples, all these sculptures, these god, goddesses are done carvings on wood. And even there are some places where toys are done with wood. So these are the main uses of teak wood being imported from Ecuador. So this is the chain where it goes from the plantations from Ecuador to the end users in India. This is about the chain where it flows from beginning to the end use. So coming to the demand prospects. See, I am doing this trade from last 25 to 30 years. Always there is a perception that teak wood may not be available in next few years. But after I traveled extensively to Latin American countries like Ecuador, Panama, Costa Rica, Colombia, Brazil, from last 25 to 30 years, I don't see any scarcity of availability of material. Maybe I don't think there will be any scarcity of material in the next few decades, the way the plantations are taking place in Latin American countries. But due to poor quality of teak wood being used by some people, the name of the teak wood is getting spoiled because inferior quality or very thin teak is being used which will bend because the material is not very strong. So some of the people slowly getting into UPVC, they are using doors or door frames made of granite. People are using the frames made of aluminium. People are started using medium density fiberboard. They are using hard density fiberboard. They are using particle board. So so many alternatives for wood are coming. There are engineering woods coming in. So there are so many alternatives which are coming, which are slowly taking over the place of teak wood and hardwoods. So I suggest the plantation owners and traders 
to be very cautious in choosing the wood. It should be a very good density with good quality, good grain, so that we don't lose our teak wood name uh, because of supplying bad qualities. So I don't think there will be any scarcity of material in Latin American countries. And at the same time, in India, in the last 20 to 30 years, what I know, the demand for teak wood from Latin American countries is going up year by year in a very big way, except for the last one or two years due to COVID and from the last three, four months due to these trade problems and container non-availability. Otherwise, I don't see any reason that demand will come down. But only thing is, I request to see that the exporters, the plantation owners, and the manufacturers, processors, try to get into value addition like sawn timber, like what most of the countries like Benin, Brazil, Ghana, they all started doing value addition rather than round logs and rough squares, which will give value addition to you. And at the same time, we can also overcome the problem of methyl bromide, which is a very harsh chemical, which is right now a big problem for our timber trade. This is about the demand prospects. And I have a small suggestions. I request all the exporters and owners or traders and all the value chain in Ecuador to have an association. Maybe I know that there are few people who are already heading the association, but I don't know how strong are they. I want all the exporters and all the people involved in this timber trade to create a very strong association and make representations of the requirements and the problems being faced in Ecuador with India and representing these things to the embassy or to the ministries, come with a single voice, with single representation. And we are also in India trying very hard being importers to solve these problems, how to come over this MBR problem. So, so that once this MBR problem is sorted out, the Ecuador teak will become more competitive by 20 to $30 per CBM because right now we are paying 20 to $30 per CBM as four times penalty. So this is one suggestion. I want all the members to be united and form a good association of timber exporters and be united and let us fight for the common problems to come over the bad situations. And here I want to tell the people that right now, most of the Ecuador people are using the uh, handsaw, chainsaw machines to make the wood into rough squares. Maybe if the people want to do some value addition by procuring more machinery, which can cut 90 degrees into sawn timber, maybe sawn timber will have more and more value and more value addition, more profitability for the exporters. And in the long run, maybe all countries will be slowly phasing out the round log exports because people want more foreign exchange, more value addition. So maybe I request all the exporters to try to add more machinery and try to do more sawn timber so that Indians also are looking at uh, value added sawn timber rather than round logs and rough squares. So these are some of my suggestions uh, relating to this uh, strengthening of the exports, exporters to form a good association. And uh, these are the main points what I thought I will highlight in this webinar. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Raja, for, for the enlightening uh, presentation on the demand prospects, the logistic aspect, phytosanitary as well, you, you covered. So, um, let me check uh, the questions that we have from from the attendees we have a qu couple of questions that are related to uh okay so um, exporters that would like to get in touch with uh teakwood buyers in in uh, in india so this is something that we could uh, um i mean like we could work with with you also that the trade office will will handle this this type of of requirement see and lo que se refiere um 
el interés de, de tomar contacto con importadores de la India, esto lo, lo podemos gestionar a través de la oficina comercial, entonces eh, eh, quizás eh, puedo eh, dejarles mi eh, correo electrónico para poder comunicarnos e identificar exactamente cuál es eh, su requerimiento. Estoy en este momento poniendo mi correo electrónico en el chat para que por favor nos envíen sus requerimientos a a la oficina comercial. Before, before the question and answer session, I really yes. thank you very much for taking a lot of interest on behalf of all the traders, exporters in Ecuador, showing a lot of concern, sending letters, trying to speak to all the Indian agriculture department, phyto department, showing your concern for Ecuador exporters, speaking to all the trade people involved, importers involved, and all the government organizations involved. Thank you very much, Christina. And I also request maybe some more letters through your new ambassador and through the ministries in Ecuador. If something more pressure is built up, I think we're also building up pressure. I request you also, I am in touch with some Colombian people and all these countries involved to put more and more pressure so that we solve this MBI problem, which is the most crisis thing, which can be handled, whereas fright is not in our hands. and because there is a huge demand for that. So once we solve this issue, I think all the exporters in your country and importers in our country will be happy and do more and more trade for a better prospects of our uh, in, uh, relationship between the both countries. And I did not say much about these demand prospects or value chain because I know that a lot of exporters in Ecuador, they're all in the trade for a long time. I don't want to say something like a baby because these all people are very educated, they're all in the trade from a long time. So I just only touched a few points. Maybe I thought I'll give more time for specific points in case they have any questions so that I can elaborate the points than just speaking the basics. Okay, uh, Krishna, madam, you can just go ahead for any questions your exporters have. Yes, 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 uh, Mr. Raja. So we have a couple of, of questions from the attendees. The one, uh, the first one is related to the length of the tick blocks. If there's any particular specification, that would be the first question. Yeah, I'm just uh, putting this slide on and I'll come okay. to this slide and explain so that it becomes easy. Uh, now you can see on the screen, uh, I'll speak about the port also. The, you can see the round blocks in the second statement. You can see the region, South India. South India comprises of the ports like Tutikorin port and Chennai port. Majority is imported in South India in Tutikorin and Chennai port. In these ports, whether it's a round logs or rough square, most of the people are exporting rough square, not round logs, but you can read it as rough square logs from Ecuador. South India is a, having two major ports. One is Tutikorin port and Chennai port. The length required in this part of the region is 2.3 meters length. And very few people have started exporting 5.8 meters so that the length of the container, one piece can be loaded to the length of a 20 feet container. So some people started trying 5.8 meters. If people can cut 5.8 meters, they get little more extra price than the 2.3, even the girth being the same you may get around 20 to 30 dollars more per cubic meter if the length is cut at 5.8 meters. So because Ecuador is a plantation where the logs are very straight, I think people can start trying 5.8 meters, which is very well accepted in South Indian markets. And you can give a light, uh, light of good competition where the long logs we import from Brazil, Panama, and Costa Rica. We get 5.8 to 11 meters length. But because you are doing a rough squares in Ecuador, maybe you can try 5.8, but the fastest moving item from Ecuador is 2.3 meters length in Southern India. Coming to North India, North India represents port like, one is Gandhidam, that is Kandla port, and Navasheva port, that is Mumbai. These are the two ports people will prefer. 2.3 is one thing, but people prefer 2.4, 2.5, 2.6 also. So North requires 2.4 to 2.6, South requires 2.3. So this is about the length. And coming to the circumference, 
or the girth, what we generally call. Uh, for North India, the people buy rough wear starting from 40 centimeters. 40 centimeters to 70 centimeters in circumference is the most wanted material in North India. But if you want to load more than 70 circumference or 70 girth, South India will pay a little more price than the North India if the logs are going to be bigger and bigger because South Indian people prefer uh, bigger logs and you get better rates in South India. So this is about the rough squares. Length, I again repeat, 2.3 is allowed in South India. 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, 2.6 is required in North India. Maybe if anything specific, maybe you can send the questionnaire to Miss Christina and again I can give specific replies by mail so that it can be easy to understand rather than I speak in English so that somebody can translate you into Spanish and send it to you. Thank you so much. Yes. Yes, thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, the question was more specific uh, related to SONTIC, so like blocks, like whether there are specific requirements in terms of like length. Is 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 there any any particular requirement for SON, for SON timber, for the length? Yeah, yeah. SON timber, same thing. In South India, people prefer 2.3 meters length for SON okay. timber. And the thickness and width I have mentioned, 90% of the wood, what is required in South India is four inches by three inches, five inches by three inches, 20%, five inches by four inches, 20%. There are small quantities like three inches by three inches, which is used in furniture for table legs, chair legs in furniture, and four inches by four inches also is required. But even six inches plus also goes, but it is only 10%. So I request people to concentrate more on four by three, five by three, five by four, and the length of 2.3 and 2.4. Even in North India, uh, people don't prefer logs, rough squares or sawn timber more than 2.4. If people doing to Gandhidam and uh, that is Mundra and uh, Navasheva can concentrate on 2.4 basically and who concentrate on Tutikorin and uh, Chennai, 80% of the people import 2.3 length in sawn timber. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Raja. We have another question regarding like sonic, like blocks. So the question is like whether the blocks uh, can be uh, sent in different like with different measurements. So like it should be like one single measurement for for the entire uh, consignment. Uh, maybe a big importer. Take an example. There are a few big importers who want to buy five containers a BL. They prefer give me four by three, two containers, give me two containers, five by three, and one container, five by four. But in case the sawmillers want to do a small shipment of one container, a big, take an example, some small importer, small processor is there. They want to export only one container or two containers. So when they cut the material, they may get few three by three, some four by three, some five by three. So what I suggest them is, they can bundle out three by three all in one bundles, four by four sub separate bundle, four by three separate bundle, and then they can offer all people are ready uh, for taking a mix in single container. If one container is being imported, they can say, I'll give 50% of these and 50% of other size. Definitely it is acceptable. And sometimes I don't want to tell, but with my full heart, I want to tell that the exporters may get little extra price if they can give in one container two three specs they can get little value addition more because there are small importers who want to buy only one import one container having a mix of three specifications so that that is possible and sometimes you may get better price rather than doing one container all the same material okay thank you thank you so much uh, mr raja uh, I don't know if we have any other question uh, pending. Just give me one second. Okay, yeah, I yes, can wait we... on them. You can ask somebody to tell them to you in voice and you can convert yes. it into English. Yes. I can, I can yeah, actually, I, actually, we have like, we have more questions. Just give me one second. So these were answered. 
give me give me one uh, okay someone uh wants uh, you to sh shed more light on the four time penalty so please um uh, uh, mr raja if you can just explain us again about the four time penalty yeah uh, maybe i earlier explained now i'll again elaborate in two yes, minutes it's a bit confusing that, that that topic at times so if you can just explain yeah. uh, to the attendees I again that was... to explain from zero to end what is the problem happening so right now there is one beetle i will specify the name of the beetle the indian scientist has did some research and said that there is a beetle which comes from latin america which cannot be killed by any form of treatment other than methyl bromide chemical. But technically, methyl bromide is a very harsh chemical. Only that can kill that specific species. So one of the scientists has written on the paper, white and black in the government, without a MBR treatment, these particular beetle, which is available in countries in Latin America, cannot be killed. So these beetle coming into India can destroy Indian forests. How far is it true? I don't want to speak much. I want to keep my fingers crossed. There are so many big viruses, big problems. I don't know why this has become a big issue. But from last few years, maybe if I remember right, it is from six to eight years, the government is relaxing once in every six months, extending the treatment other than MBR to be allowed in India by doing a MBR treatment in India. MBR is available in India. An Indian importer, wherever the exporter in Ecuador is not able to treat with MBR because of non-availability of MBR, if you do with aluminum phosphine or if you do with phosphine gases, we have to bring into India in the destination port, the phyto department, that is plant quarantine department, which comes under Ministry of Agriculture, will ask us to pay the charges for each container to treat the teak wood imported with methyl bromide in India, which takes two more days to do that and release it, which is an additional two days to clear the cargo. That is one. Apart from the chemical treatment, what we do by paying extra payment, we also pay four times of the fees as a penalty, which is being levied because it is not treated in the exporting country without methyl bromide. Because of these charges, the cost of the non-MBR treating countries, the cost, maybe take an example, if your cost is $300 per cubic meter, and if for a similar material from Panama is $300, people are trying to prefer Panama because we don't spend additional four times penalty because Panama, Costa Rica, uh, places like El Salvador, Guatemala, Nicaragua, Mexico, uh, Brazil, these are all countries are doing MBA treatment. So because of that, the tea could imported from Ecuador takes two to three additional days for clearing because we have to treat it again in India. And also we pay up 20 to $30 per CBM as a penalty for clearing the non MBA treated wood. So MBR problem is solved in between India government and other non-MBR countries. Ecuador will gain more importance and it will become more competitive and there can be a little more margin for the importer or exporter. They can share the amount of 20 to $30 and you become more competitive than uh, Costa Rica, Panama or Basel. Uh, this is what uh, is at the moment. The present MBR treatment Permission granted by the plant quarantine department expired on 31st of October. That is any bill of lading loaded after the BL date of the shipping BL. Anything dated after 31st of October as on today legally will not be permitted to be imported into India. But there can be here and there one or two things where there can be a small benefit of doubt, we have to approach the FITO department, convince them, request them. There can be, but 99% I request the exporters, unless the MBR problem is sorted out, I request them to be cool, not to export containers, 
maybe people can explore countries like Vietnam or China where this problem is not there for time being. Don't be, think that I'm very harsh. I'm very serious to do business with Ecuador along with all the other importers in India. But being giving a genuine suggestion, I have to openly say people who export after 1st of November will have a risk of the cost because tomorrow once you people export, tomorrow the government does not allow. The importers may say, I cannot import because legally there is no permission. We have confirmed to you, Ecuador exporters, thinking that from six to eight years, every six months they're extending. We thought they will extend this time also. So we placed your orders. So at that time, the there can be a lot of disputes. People may lose a lot of money or there can be huge penalties or there can be a deportation of goods or the importers may be blacklisted by the FITO department and people may cancel the import licenses. So there are going to be huge problems for the importers and even the exporters because most of the exporters are exporting the material taking 25% advance, 30% advance. The balance money will be at stake. Tomorrow, if the importer doesn't take the documents, the exporter may have a risk of not getting the balance payment if the government is not relaxing the MBR treatment. But for this, we are trying very hard. Even Ms. Christina is trying very hard. All the other countries where MBR is not there, we are all trying hard, but we will wait and go for the best. But my sincere suggestion to hold for a few more days not to ship the goods until there is a clear picture about relaxation. In the meantime, I do a small suggestion. If people can do sawn timber till the good news comes, you can at least do value addition, try to cut this sawn timber and keep trying these as an experiment and try to get some more value addition and try to get into a next level of productions. This is my suggestion. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, thank you so much uh, for your answer. And yes, just to compliment uh, uh, in Spanish, uh, uh, yes, uh, el gobierno de Ecuador está activamente eh, dando seguimiento a este tema de, de la extensión. Esperamos tener noticias positivas en los próximos días. Estamos en contacto con autoridades indias, estamos trabajando con, con las asociaciones de importadores para que esta notificación pueda salir, ojalá, en los próximos días. Nosotros como oficina comercial eh, les mantendremos al tanto sobre los avances al respecto. Uh, Mr. Raja, we have another question. Could you mention the advantages and disadvantages of Ecuadorian TIC compared to other countries, TIC from Brazil, TIC from Myanmar, TIC from Costa Rica? Yeah. We will try to keep Myanmar TIC aside because yes. that is almost four to five times expensive than any other woods. So that has become like king of teak. And from ages, it is like it has been dominating and uh, the quality is entirely different and it is a forest resource. So we'll, I'll try to compare Ecuador teak uh, with Latin American countries because uh, the forest wood like Benin, Cameroon, they get an extra price because this is all forest timber. Recently, three months back, Togo has banned cutting of forest. So Togo teak is not coming now. Ivory Coast has stopped cutting of forest from the last two, three years. Only a value added material, like only sawn timber can be exported from Ecuador, sorry, uh, from Ivory Coast, from Tanzania, from Togo. Some countries are slowly phasing out. When the governments are going for IMF, like International Monetary Fund for loans, IMF is putting restriction on cutting of forest. Whichever country is cutting the forest, the funding is not taking place from IMF. So the country is accepting, okay, we are not going to cut the forest or we don't want to cut the round logs. We want to do value addition. Slowly, the local country people will get employment, industry will grow, and by doing the sizes, you get a value addition. So most of the countries, what I see in the last five years, slowly are phasing out round logs and getting into sawn timber. Maybe which will give you a value addition, industry will grow in your country, labor will get employment, and fee, almost it is like a semi-finished products come into India. So uh, maybe, I don't know, I just got lost. The question what you asked is, please, Christina, can you repeat the question? I really went out of the okay, question. Yeah, 
compare to compare the quality of Ecuadorian tea wood with the quality of uh, tea wood that uh, uh, comes from Costa Rica, from from Panama. Yes, so that that was the question. Yeah, yeah I'll come to this point. So here, every country has good wood and bad wood. Like, for example, if you buy a rice or wheat, see, you have a rice for five dollars, three dollars, seven dollars, two dollars, one dollar. See. Even in teak, you have material. It all depends upon the quality. Once you use a proper seed, like the plantation, if the seed is good, the quality of the plantation will grow. If the seed is bad, the grain pattern may not be good. There may not be more oil content. The density may not be there. It all depends upon the area where it grows, seed what is used. If a proper insecticide or pesticide is done, the tree can grow with a proper maintenance, straight. And if the seed is not good, you get a bad tea. So it all depends upon the seed used and also the climatic and soil conditions. If the soil is good, the tea will be good. If the soil is bad, and if you have more of rains, there can be, the growth can be very fast and there can be more white sap and the density of the wood will be low. Because of Burma, Sponan, Benin, these are all woods which are grown in the forest where there is no much rain available. So uh, the density of the wood is very good and they get a good price. So in Ecuador also, there are some good quality woods and some bad quality woods. So it all depends upon, uh, maybe I will show you the slide, the qualities which determine the price. Or the, uh, One second, I'm just going back to one of the slides where I'll again tell the points about the quality. Here, the factors of the quality. Now, after finishing this slide, I will tell the comparison with other Latin American countries. You have a good grain pattern. Grain pattern is something like grains, like what you see the lines like on a zebra or a tiger. That is the best part of Ecuador. Grains patterns are the best in whatever I have seen or any Indian importer has seen. The Ecuador teak is very famous and people love that grain pattern. So other points like there should not be bend, there should not be more white sap, there should not be any pinholes, cutting accuracy. These are all uh, different factors, but beauty of Ecuador is grain pattern. Now I'll compare this Ecuador teak. See, because in Ecuador, I see the same circumference coming for $300, $350 per CBM, $400 per CBM. This is all based on the bend green pattern, whether it is a yellowish color or golden brown color, or whether the cutting is good or whether the bark is thin or bark is thick. So many patterns, so many factors determine the price. Coming to Costa Rica and Panama, where Ecuador lags behind is Panama and Costa Rica exports short logs as well as round logs. Sorry, short logs as well as long logs. Most of the Costa Rica and Panama exports six meters plus round logs. And I don't understand today also why Ecuadorians don't export round logs. I don't think there is any restriction on round logs, but I don't know why. Panama, Costa Rica exports in 40 feet containers, Colombia, Panama, uh, Brazil, everyone does in 40 feet containers. But whereas Ecuador, maybe the mentality has got set they are only doing rough square and sawn timber. Maybe it has become a practice or it has become from ages people are doing, people started doing. So uh, coming to round locks, coming from Colombia, Panama, Costa Rica, Brazil, Indians have an advantage of cutting to whatever size we want. Whereas if you make it as a rough square, we may lose the benefit of cutting to the required particular size because the center heart little cracks because I'm going to more deep. Every center heart will have a small crack. When it is being cut by chainsaw, they just do in a speed. They don't see where the center heart is there, where the crack is. So round locks generally has a more advantage than rough square. So the volumes come in a big way, more round locks than rough squares. Ecuador is the only country where 95 90% of the teak wood is exported as rough square and uh, clean squares. 
but other countries like costa rica panama colombia uh, brazil they export 90% round logs so this is where i don't know maybe the exporters or traders or plantation owners has to do a more research why colombians are not doing round logs why they are spending more time on rough stress maybe most of the people i spoke to exporters they say that in a 20 feet container we load around 23 cubic meters if it is a round log they load only 14 cubic meters but here you lose around 20 to 30 percent of the round log measurement once you cut into a rough square so technically maybe an exporter tries to load without doing any value addition you spend a lot of machinery you spend a lot of petrol you spend a lot of manpower to cut and it takes a lot of time maybe if exporters try to load short logs and see by loading 14 cubic meters in the 20 feet maybe you can come to conclusion why we are not doing round logs but if round logs can be done the demand in for round logs in india is much more than the rough squares Thank you, thank you, Mr. Raja. So actually, yes, in Ecuador, there's a regulation um, regarding round locks, and that's the reason why you see uh, mostly rough squares uh, from Ecuador, because that 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 little bit of processing is is uh, mandated uh, by by the law. So yes, so yes, there's that regulation. Okay, so we have uh, another question regarding uh, heat treatment, whether that's going in like a type of chamber or is like uh, is like treat I mean like is air treated like in the open so like um, how is how is it done yeah maybe what I will do is by tomorrow I will share you what is a clean dry treatment I will share you the other countries the phyto certificate what, how it has to, what are the specifications required for a clean dry and a heat treatment open drying yeah. is not permitted into india from ecuador open drying even though the moisture content you can keep it in air dry and bring down the moisture content it is not allowed 100 percent it should be either mbi treated or a clean dry clean dry is like you keep in heat chambers at particular temperature keep the sawn timber and treat it for few days to bring down the moisture content with some chambers the seed treatment and clean dry treatment are available on the net and this equipment is available but um, for sawn timber clean dry and a heat treatment is a must a drying is not permitted phyto certificate should either have clean dry or a heat treatment in case of sawn timber and if it's a rough square or a round log mbi treatment is required yes i i think it'll be um It'd be better if, like, yeah, we can share this information regarding heat treatment by email. So, uh, por favor, a los, uh, a los exportadores interesados en conocer más acerca de este procedimiento, si por favor me envían un correo electrónico para poder remitirles esta información. Respecto al tratamiento térmico, el gobierno ecuatoriano también está activamente trabajando para hacer eh, ciertas aclaraciones con el gobierno de, de la India para que este este tipo de tratamiento pues sea completamente aceptado entonces eh, yes we have another uh, question uh, which uh, is a bit different that i would like to uh, share with you uh, mr raja so uh, someone is asking about the demand of pigwood boards whether there's uh, there's demand for this uh, for this type of uh, of, of product what is a teak wood? Boards. Boards, boards. Boards, okay. Uh, yes, there is a demand, but it is very small. The market is okay. very small. Uh, the boards are finger joint boards coming in 9 mm thickness, 12 mm, 15 mm, 18 mm, 30 mm thickness. So all the waste material of teak wood is cut into all the 3 inches, 4 inches, 6 inches, 8 inches. All the scrap material is made into finger joint boards and it is properly sanded and uh, thickness from 19 mm to 32 mm is goes in india but it is very very expensive one container may cost around forty thousand dollars fifty thousand dollars so not much imports take place uh, but there is a specific demand getting in touch with the that exporter and the required importer contacting is going to be very less because very few people maybe i can say one or two percent of the total importers may do that uh, finger joint board uh 
so maybe maybe there is a chance but how to identify the end buyer is a big question there are few buyers there are some exporters one person is already one or two people whom i know in ecuador are already doing this product and small way it comes because 120 feet container is going to be very expensive the processing time involved is very high the cost involved is very high so maybe in a long run future is going to be there for that but for this material i suggest the exporter to try the markets like us and europe where they get better price for a finished product of board rather than in india okay thank you thank you so much uh, for your inputs uh, mr raja okay i think then the, the rest of the questions are related to to heat treatment to gd that this information as uh, you suggested uh, um, we can we can send by a by a email so rest of the questions uh, um, are similar to the ones that you already answered so in any case we will be sharing with uh, our exporters your presentation so they'll i think like they will they will find most of their uh, the answers to to the, their questions so yes so we have um, we are almost uh, reaching the end so we have uh, some five minutes left if someone else has some different question that uh, would like to ask otherwise uh, we would like to uh, thank you uh, mr raja for the excellent presentation and uh, muchas gracias a los exportadores por su interés en el mercado de la india desde la oficina comercial in mumbai pues quedamos a las órdenes yes uh, mr raja i think we don't have any further question and um, Again, thank you so much. Y Alessandro, pues podemos concluir ya este webinar. Thank you very much, uh, Cristina. And I thank uh, Gion also for coordinating the event. Once again, I thank all the exporters, plantation owners, and all the people involved in this webinar for listening patiently with my views and my question answer session. Once again, thank you very much. Gracias. Have a nice day. Yes. Uh, so, uh, just one thing, uh, eh, eh, por favor, eh, a los exportadores me están enviando sus correos electrónicos, por favor, eh, como vamos ya a dar por terminado el webinar, no voy a poder anotar todo, así que nuevamente les escribo mi correo electrónico para que me puedan enviar sus inquietudes y, y atenderlos de, de esta manera. ¿no? Eh... Listo. Entonces he enviado mi, mi correo electrónico en el chat. So yeah, just Mr. Raja, I was uh, I was sharing my my email address with uh, with the attendees. So if they have any other query, they can always contact me, and then I'll, I'll coordinate with you. Okay, great. Uh, thank you. Next so point. Okay. Yeah, I I first want to thank my son Ashish who made this PowerPoint presentation, made it my Absolutely. life little simple. <laughs> and uh, one more thing is Ashish will be sharing you one of the heat treatment phyto certificate of other countries uh, what are the uh, phyto certificate what it contains for a heat treatment clean dry i'll get back to you in a day or two but heat treatment he will be sharing you right now in next five minutes one of the copy of the heat treatment done in other countries great great thank you thank you so much uh, uh, mr raj entonces eh, bueno a los participantes muchísimas gracias y estaremos en contacto nuevamente lo reitero el gobierno de ecuatoriano está trabajando activamente para el tema de, de las extensiones para para los los rob squares para eh, para la eh, el tipo de madera que pues más exporta ecuador a la india y también pues para este eh, para el tema de eh, el tratamiento térmico entonces cualquier novedad la oficina eh, comercial eh, los, les informará de, de manera oportuna muchísimas gracias que tengan un excelente día have a, have a good evening uh, mr raja and ashish thank you thank you so much muchas gracias alessandro thank you so much thank you muchas, muchas gracias con todos Christina, can I wind up?